Three, two, one. Holy cow! Oh, it's still going! <laughs> Holy cow! Do you believe that? What's up you guys, I'm Don Turner and welcome back to Woods to Table. I am so excited to bring you Bait Cannon 2.0. We built one of these a couple of months ago. You probably saw that video. We've listened to your feedback, your comments and questions, and we've used this a number of times at the beach. And now we've done our research and we figured out how to improve on our design. This one is gonna be even easier to build, even more effective, blast your bait even further out off the shore. I'm telling you, you're gonna be the envy of your friends. Casting is a thing of the past. Stick with me, I'm gonna show you how you do it. All right, so here you can see all the parts that you need for the basic assembly. I got all of these pieces from Lowe's for a grand total of about 60 bucks, and I had to buy more PVC than I needed because they didn't have the shorter pieces of the two inch that I needed for connectors. So you could do even better than I did. Okay, so one of our design improvements uh, with this design as opposed to the last is we're gonna switch to a four inch air cylinder instead of a three inch. The last one was three inches by 36 inches. This time we're gonna go four inches by 30 inches. Doing some quick math and some formulas that we found online that I'll post here. We've calculated that this cylinder, um, although shorter, is going to hold almost 50% more air than our last cylinder. So at the same air pressure, that should give us more air behind our bait. Going out this barrel translates into more velocity, translates into a longer distance. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this up to 30 inches. Cut this up. All right, so for our two inch, this is only gonna serve as connector material between um, the air cylinder and this kind of step down piece and then the ball valve and the actual barrel. So we only need a three and a half inch piece and a three inch piece out of this two inch. Um, I didn't need all this material, they just didn't have like a two foot section or something shorter. So this is where you could probably come up with something that's a little bit cheaper. But this is also one of the design improvements on the last air cannon that we built. On my calculations, I think the last cannon had something like eight different joints in it with PVC cement. This one's gonna have about five. So we've reduced the points of failure and the places that can leak in the last design. Even though I didn't experience that, I think some other people have. So this is gonna be an improvement on what we did before. So let's cut a three and a half inch piece and then a three inch piece and we're ready for final assembly. It's really that easy. All right, so here you can see the basic design, at least as I've envisioned it. And this is where you can see the last of the three design improvements um, that we've come up with. This is a straight line design. So you don't have um, the air kind of going around two 90 degree bends in order to get out the end of the barrel. Should provide less resistance. We'll see if it translates into better velocity. We got the same 60 inch, inch and a half barrel. It's gonna affix to this bottom part of the unit. I don't think that we're gonna attach this so that it's easy to break apart and transport. Now we're ready to glue it all together. All right, so the one piece of this that you have to be a little bit careful with is installing this um, air valve onto the end cap of the overall unit. And this is a 0.453 inch diameter um, tire valve like you would use on a bicycle that we picked up from an Ace Hardware. This one actually is one that we had left over from the last build. There's, we've never experienced a problem with this stuff. No reason for us to change either the part or the size or anything like that. Um, so what you wanna do is you've got to bore a fairly precise size diameter hole in order for this to seal up and be airtight so you don't leak air when you're trying to pump into the unit. Um, we know from trial and error the last time that a half inch drill bit is really perfect for this 0.453 inch diameter uh, valve. So we want to step up to that. We don't want to just bore with that because we want this hole to be very, very smooth. So we're just going to use a couple of just staggered sizes and drill bits and step up to that number. And then we're going to install this uh, in the final part. Then we're ready to glue everything together for final assembly.
Good? Good. Now, I went a little bit offset with this one because this has these raised letters in the very center and I didn't want those to interfere with the seal that we were gonna get. So, we'll see. I may apply some additional sealant over here just to make sure that this is completely airtight, but this seemed like it was a better idea to offset this a little bit. All right, so now all that's left to do is to um, glue this stuff together with PVC cement and this, I mean, this couldn't have been easier. I'm amazed at how fast this actually went. But I've noticed something um, that actually kind of aligns with some of the questions and comments that we've gotten about this is that with this larger PVC, this is four inch again, when I fit this end cap onto this four inch pipe, I notice there's a lot of play in here. There's a lot of space in there and I'm hoping I mean, the only way that I can kind of mitigate this is to just cover this stuff with PVC primer and then PVC cement and hope that it makes a good seal. Um, otherwise, we're going to have a leak here and it'll be impossible for us to hold air pressure in this thing. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so you want to, with all of this, um, you're just going to come in with this purple PVC primer, coat the ends of this um, at every single joint, let that dry, and then come back and coat it again with PVC cement and make up your joints. You're gonna wanna let that dry between each step, and the way that this stuff actually works is it's not really glue, it kinda melts and makes the PVC into one cohesive part. Um, so it might even be as strong as the original PVC, I don't know. Uh, but if done properly, this should make a good seal. The amount of gaps that I see in here in these parts makes me a little concerned, but we'll test it out here in a minute. While we let this stuff dry for a minute, y'all want a little behind the scenes peek? This is uh, medium clear PVC cement. Be really careful with this as you take this lid off. Oh yeah. You wanna see what happens when this stuff interacts with stone. You try to wash it off, you try solvent, you try you know whatever, you know, wire brushes. Take a peek under this table real quick. This is from build 1.0. There it is right there. There's like an ectoplasm stain on my patio right now that will not come out because of Bait Cannon 1.0. We have to fix that. It looks so bad. That's what the towel's for. You got to keep the towel over the ectoplasm stain. Yeah, no. So don't let that get off. And if you do, just replace the bricks. Don't try to scrub it all out because then it spreads. Pro tip. All right, so that's pretty much it. We made up a total of about um, five joints in this thing, and we're gonna let this sit overnight, let it dry for at least 24 hours. You want that PVC cement to cure um, those pieces to kind of combine in there, or you're gonna have a risk of leaks. So do not test the air pressure in this thing before it's had a chance to cure. When it's cured, we'll come back and this barrel's just gonna fit right in here. I'm not gonna seal this right now uh, because um, I may wanna experiment with some different barrel lengths, and this is also gonna make it a heck of a lot easier to transport by being able to remove the barrel. So we're gonna break this thing down, um, leave the barrel off it, let this piece sit overnight. We're gonna come back tomorrow, paint this thing black, put some decals on it, make it look really slick, and we're gonna get it out, test it a little bit. Y'all stay tuned. 
I gotta hurry because it's, I mean, it's it's nighttime, it's getting dark, but it's still humid. And uh, this is like a big pizza oven up here next to the house. These bricks are like 95 degrees, even though this out here is like 70. You're a little sweaty. I'm told that I'm a little sweaty. Listen, um, while I've got you, I'm gonna show you. I made uh, one of these bait molds in the last video. I'll give you a link to it either up in this region or um, in the description and show you how we did this. This is essentially a piece of treated uh, two by six that we screwed together, cut it in four pieces. I'll give you the dimensions in the other video. Uh, it's treated so that you can, you know, it's gonna get wet. You're gonna put it in the freezer and freeze your bait molds. Um, I've made this with five holes where you can put five of these 10 inch pieces of inch and a half PVC. It's important. This is the same diameter as your barrel on your bait cannon so that the bait mold can slip right out of this and down the barrel. And you're gonna put um, your Carolina rig or your drop shot rig or whatever it is with the swivel. Mia's gonna help us with this last little bit. Out the top, um, fill that up about two thirds of the way with water. Let that freeze overnight so you want this whole thing to just fit in your freezer like it is. Take those out. Mia's gonna help us fill them up. Show everybody how to do it. Take those down to the beach with you the next morning and that's gonna be your bait ones. All right, you guys, we're out here on the lake today. I couldn't wait any longer to unleash the beast. I think we've given this PVC cement time enough to cure, um, and I don't have a beach trip planned anytime soon. Even though we intend to use these for surf fishing, um, I wanna test them, and we need a lot of space to do this where we can shoot them in a safe direction, and fields, football fields, whatever, won't work. So we're gonna do this out here on the lake. I gotta hurry, because there's a major storm coming in behind us today. Um, so we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison with a moderate temperature, a moderate temperature, a moderate air pressure, pick 100 PSI with the old bait cannon that we built in the last video and then this one at 100 PSI and just see how much further, hopefully further, this one will shoot and then we'll pump this thing up and see what kind of distance we can get out of it. Stick with us. All right, so at 100 PSI, we're gonna take our first bait mold out of the tubes um, and I don't have this hooked up to a rig. We're just gonna shoot a piece of ice out here and see what kind of distance we get. I'm so out of breath. I gotta find a better way. I had an air compressor or something to doing this because that bike pump is definitely a workout. Okay, we're gonna shoot this thing off and then we're gonna try the new one and see what kind of distance we get. Three, two, one. Now I bet you that was probably, this never gets old to me. <laughs> that was at 100 PSI, that thing came apart and it was spinning in the air. So it, it, aerodynamics not good, but that was probably only about 100, maybe 110 yards. You concur? Yes. I think, you know, from all our time playing golf. So why don't we put another bait mold in the other one and see if we can do a little bit better with the new rig. Okay, so this isn't exactly an apples to apples comparison. We had some problems with the other bait molds. I knew we didn't freeze them for long enough, so they didn't want to come out of the containers. We're using one of our old leftover bait molds from the beach, so this actually is significantly heavier. And it's actually coming apart because of the high temperatures that we have today. It's a really hot, humid night. So it's actually in two pieces in the barrel. I don't have a lot of hope for how this is gonna come out, but we're gonna give it a try here and just see what happens. Ready? Ready? <laughs> well, you stayed in the boat. Holy crap! <laughs> so I. <laughs> that went easily twice as far. <laughs> it blew the bait, it blew the lower assembly off of the barrel. Probably not a surprise because we decided not to glue it in place to make it easier to transport. Uh, we're going to have to do that. Uh, this but it's significantly more air. I mean, just, there was recoil. I can't hear out of my left ear right now. I, I got like some kind of compression or concussion in my eardrum. I bet that it's probably bleeding right now. So 
This thing is amazing. I mean, it Mark, easily twice as far as the other one. Awesome. Now I kind of want to see how far we can get this to go. I want to take that air pressure up as high as I can get it with this little bicycle pump. It's struggling just to get this thing to 100 PSI. This guy is struggling to get this thing to 100 PSI and I'm worried honestly when I shoot this thing off if it's at like 140 and I don't want to take it much further than that because it's only scheduled 40 PVC. Uh, it might blow out the back of the boat so we may have to tie a rope to it or something but this is awesome. Absolutely awesome. I cannot believe the result that we just got and that was a bait mold easily eight ounces heavier than the one that we shot out of the old cannon and it was in two freaking pieces unbelievable ready i'm gonna see if i can do a better job of somehow holding this thing i'm gonna have to put my leg behind it to hold the recoil are you ready I'm ready this is 140 psi make sure everybody's clear ready three two one Holy cow! Oh, it's still going! <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! Do you believe that? Oh my gosh! Did you see that? How far did that go? <laughs> Three bills if it was an inch. I wouldn't want to pump it up any more than that. And it's a bicycle pump and it wore me out. That was easily worth it. That's my workout for a week, y'all. That's my cardio. Absolutely amazing. We didn't even worry about calculating like the optimal barrel length. I think it can do more. Maybe that's Bait Cannon 3.0. This was absolutely awesome. Can't wait to try it again. Try it out at the beach.